So Raghunath Das Goswami was the son of a very, very wealthy man. Money was no obstacle for him at that time. So he bought out all the chipped rice and yogurt and condensed milk in that town. And he sent his men to go to other towns also. And they purchased all the supplies from many, many towns around. And they brought them there. And they got many, many clay pots. And in each clay pot, they put some chipped rice. And some they put condensed milk. And some they put yogurt. And they offered this to the Lord. And they distributed it to all the people. Everyone would get one pot with condensed milk. And one pot with uh, yogurt. And each one with chipped rice. And for Nityananda Prabhu, he sat on a raised platform with all his associates. And he also had two great pots. Soon many, many people came, not only from that town, but from all the towns around. And soon the same vendors who Raghunath Das had bought supplies from were coming to the little town of Panihati and taking that very same preparations. It soon became so crowded there on the banks of the Ganga, there was no space for everyone to sit down. So many of the Brahmins and others, they went into the water with their two pots and began taking there. A very festive atmosphere developed, and Nityanandabu was in a very funny mood. He made a plate for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, though he was not physically present, being in Jagannath Puri. But he could see him, and some others could see him also, that he also came there and accepted prasadam, sitting next to Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And Nityananda Prabhu, he got up and began wandering around with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and taking some rice from the different plates, he put it in Chaitanya's mouth. And Chaitanya did the same, putting rice from the plates in Nityanandabu's mouth. And this way they played like two boys and danced. And not everyone could understand what Nityanandabu was doing. They did not all see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but some were able to see. And so the day finished, and Nityanandabu took rest in the house of Raghava Pandit. And the next day, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, he approached Nityanandabu in a very humble mood. said, My Lord, I'm a very fallen soul and I'm trapped in household life. I want to become free to serve the lotus feet of Chaitanya Dev. But I've tried so many times and every time I try, my parents catch me and bring me back. They have had me married in an attempt to make me attached to this world. But I have no interest. I am only interested in serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I know you can easily give the gift of his lotus feet. So please, have your mercy upon me. And Nityanandabu, he smiled and he said, Just see this Raghunath Das. He has opulence in his house equal to that of Lord Indra. He has a beautiful wife and so much money, and all servants and facilities, but he looks at it as completely useless and like poison. He's become a madman of Sri Chaitanya Chandra. Who can keep such a madman in his home? He's become mad with love of God, and there's no keeping him staying in his home. He said to all his associates, you please all bless him, you please all bless him, that he can become free from this, and he can attain the desired goal of his life. So not only Nityananda Prabhu, but all his associates, they blessed Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, that he could attain the ultimate goal of life. And having thus obtained the blessing of Nityananda Prabhu and his saintly associates, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami returned home knowing that all the obstacles would soon be removed. The Guru of Sri Raghunath Das Goswami lived there in the family property and there was a temple there that he was responsible for. He had one Brahmin servant who took care of the deity there. He asked Sri Raghunath Das one day, he said, 
This Brahmin servant, he says he does not want to do this service today. You please come with me and we'll try to convince him to do the service of the deity. So Raghunathas went and the guards did not think it necessary to go with him because he was accompanied by the family guru. So Raghunathas went with Yadunandanacharya and after some time walking down the forest path he said, you go ahead Gurudev, I'll, I'll notify him, I'll convince him to do the service and then I'll return home. Yadunandan Acharya returned and Sri Raghunath Goswami, he saw his opportunity. He began running, not in the direction of Jagannath Puri directly where he wanted to go, but in the opposite direction. For he knew that his father's soldiers and his father's servants would soon follow him. They knew the main roads to Jagannath Puri. They knew his intention to go there. So he began running in the opposite direction through the forest paths, not on the main roads. Running, running, running. Sometimes eating, sometimes not eating. And after some time he turned around and began to go in an unusual way towards Jagannath Puri, through the forest paths. Sometimes he came to villages and slept in cow sheds. Sometimes he slept here and there. Sometimes for days he didn't sleep or eat. Sometimes he drank water. Sometimes he drank nothing. Sometimes he had a little rice. Sometimes he just fasted. In this way, in twelve days, he traversed a huge distance to Jagannath Puri, which would have normally taken a month by walking. And intensely eager to see his Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das Goswami, entered Sri Jagannath Puri and came into the association of Sri Chaitanya Dev his associates and fell at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, crying tears of joy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him and he said, Ah, see how fortunate you've become. Krishna has bestowed his mercy upon you. And Sri Raghunath Das, he thought to himself, I don't know Krishna. Krishna is far off from me. I don't know the mercy of Krishna, but I know the mercy of you. I know your mercy. I think you're the one who brought me out of this toolkit of material enjoyment. I think Nityanandabhu is the one who helped me also. My gurus, they're especially the ones who are helping me. They're helping me to attain God. But right now for me, God is far off. And their mercy, your mercy, is my everything. In this way, Sri Raghunath Das entered the assembly of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Dev, he said to his close associate, his personal secretary, Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami, he said, you take this Raghunath Das and you think of him as if you were, he were your own son. You take care of him. I'm putting him under your care. And so Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, he began doing intense bhajan austerities under the guidance of Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he progressed more and more in his bhajan and he attained the mercy of Sri Rupa Goswami and Sri Sanatan Goswami in Vrindavan. And he wrote many, many beautiful prayers in separation from Radha and Krishna. And his prayers are considered the ultimate prayers in describing the goal, the service of Sri Radha in Vrindavan the ultimate goal of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would sit and weep by Radha Kund, chanting Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Shri Radhe, Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Shri Radhe, Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Shri Radhe, Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Shri Radhe. Shri Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Jai, Shri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.